If you haven't done so yet, just pause the video and reread the question to get a sense of the information presented in the question. We've gone ahead and have drawn a picture that captures the information that is discussed. And one thing to notice immediately is that this projectile is fired horizontally. So we've tried to draw on that by showing a velocity vector pointing horizontally to the right. And importantly, if a projectile is fired horizontally, that would mean that the angle at which it is fired is zero degrees. And for part A, in order to determine the length of time it takes the projectile to reach the ground, we're going to actually examine the information in the y direction. So we'll write down everything we know. For example, we know that the initial y coordinate of the projectile is 45 meters because the gun is fired 45 meters off the ground. So we can say y naught is equal to 45 meters. And then over here, because the projectile hits the ground, we know the final y coordinate is indeed 0. So we can write y is equal to 0 meters. Again, we know that the angle is 0 degrees. The initial speed with which the projectile is fired is 250 meters per second. And then, of course, in the y direction, the projectile is under the influence of gravity. So the magnitude of the acceleration would be the value of g. It would be 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're looking for time. We've listed the projectile motion equations above here. And if you look carefully, you can see that this equation will actually serve us best. It's going to allow us to find the time. So let's write it one more time down below here. And we'll plug in the known information that we've already listed. We've omitted the units for clarity's sake. Notice that the sine of 0 is 0. So you're going to end up with 250 times 0, which is 0, and then that multiplied by time is still 0. So in other words, this entire term disappears. The left side is negative 45. We can multiply negative half by 9.8 to get negative 4.9. We will divide both sides by negative 4.9. And when we do that, the left-hand side becomes 9.18. And then we'll take the square root, and we end up with a time of approximately 3.03 seconds. So this would be the correct answer for part A. Let's go up and look at part B here. It asks us the horizontal distance from the firing point. So basically it's asking us for the final x coordinate of the projectile right before it hits the ground. So in this case it's going to be useful to write down everything we know in the x direction. So for instance the initial x coordinate is 0 meters as indicated in the picture. The final x coordinate is unknown, so that's what we'll be looking for in part b. The acceleration in the x direction is actually 0 meters per second squared because gravity does not act horizontally. The initial speed with which the projectile is fired is known again to be 250, and then the angle at which that projectile was fired is again 0 degrees. And then we of course solved for the time. Notice the time was calculated in the y direction, but it would be the same time for the x direction. So we go up again and we look for a good equation for us to use from projectile motion, and it turns out that the first equation will serve us best here. So we'll come down here and rewrite it. And that should be it right there. And so we can plug in the known values. We had 0, excuse me, the final x coordinate is unknown. So that's x. The initial is 0. And then we have the 250 cosine of 0 times the time. This 0 can be disregarded. And you can go ahead and type in the information on the right-hand side. And when you do so, you will get about 758. That's the final x-coordinate of the projectile, and that is the distance that it travels horizontally. So that's the correct answer for part B. 
Finally, in part C, what is the magnitude of the vertical component of the velocity as it strikes the ground? So notice it says vertical, so we're going to go back to the y direction, and we're basically going to be solving for the final velocity in the y direction. Now, once we solve for the final velocity, we'll just take the absolute value, and that's going to give us the magnitude of that final vertical velocity. If we study our equations carefully, it will be the third one that will work best for us here. So we'll just come over here and tuck it inside the picture. We have the final velocity in the y direction is equal to the initial speed of 250 times the sine of the initial angle minus g times the time that we had found. Remember the sine of 0 is 0, so this term actually knocks out of the equation. And when you type this in, you're going to get a final velocity in the y direction of negative 29.7 meters per second. But remember, it wants the magnitude. So you basically just take the absolute value. And so the magnitude would be the absolute value of 29.7. It would be the absolute value of negative 29.7, which gives us positive 29.7 meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part C.